By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a game of Atlantic old school magic. And that means that we've got Mana Burn and Fallen Empires in the building. And I'm actually playing against a Canadian player. His name is Alexander. And he's bringing a mono black deck to the table. And I am bringing a mono white deck to the table. So it's a classic fight between these two colors of magic the gathering now before we are going to the actual games i am first going to do a little bit of deck tech i have pictures of both of these decks now if you want to go straight to the games themselves check out the description below there you will find a timestamp click on the timestamp and it'll take you straight to game number one and here we are going to start with the mono black deck of alexander and here we see the deck of Alex, and um, as we can see, it is a mono black brew. And I see, I see some of the usual suspects. I guess the black knights, the pump knights. Um, I see four um, hypnotic specters, and of course, it still makes a great combo with you know four dark rituals. Turn one dark ritual hippie is that that combo that you always fear when you're playing against a, a black player, mono black player. But we also see some interesting includes. I guess I guess this is more the Atlantic style of, of playing mono black because you have access to the four him to Turek. So there's a logical connection by combining that discard theme with uh, a card like the Rack. So you can get extra damage in. We don't see any Underworld Dreams, for example, here. So I guess that's just another way in. We see also some interesting control elements in the form of two royal assassins and an icy manipulator and of course royal assassin and paralyze is just a really sweet combo it just feels good to say you know paralyze your creature step down and then later in the game you can use your royal or just do it straight away just it, it's it's always a nice feeling and also icy and royal assassin is very strong so if you can get that online now um remember he is playing against a mono white deck so that means that those orders of the ebon hand can become quite powerful and also in the sideboard we see some gloom so those glooms can become quite powerful as well after sideboarding so this is the deck of alexander now let's take a look at my deck and here we see the deck that I am playing with today. So I'm also playing with a mono color deck. I'm playing with mono white. And because of the Atlantic inclusion, I thought, you know what? Why try? Why not try out Conchhorn? Now Conchhorn is an interesting artifact from Fallen Empire. It's it's two to cast. It's one in sack. Draw two cards and put one card from your hand on top of your library. Now I think this could work really well with. Land tax. So you can see I've added, I've included three land taxes. So land tax allows me to look up for up to three basic lands if my opponent controls more basic lands than me, and I can do that during my upkeep. So what I can do is I can activate my land tax, search for three basic lands, put them in my hand, and then I get to shuffle my deck. Now this is very important. And then at the end step of my opponent, I can activate my conch horn. I can draw two cards, and I can put one card back on top of my library. That will most likely be a land that I just drew with the land tax. And then in my upkeep, the land tax will trigger. I get to pick three basic lands again and get to shuffle because the shuffle effect is quite important because why isn't conch, conch horn that great of a card is because you put one card back in your library and you know you're going to draw that so you kind of need that shuffle effect but with the shuffle effect of conch horn i can hopefully you know get rid of that excessive lands and draw useful cards instead so i'm from a personal point you know brewing this deck i'm really curious to see is conch horn land tax is that gonna work out now um we also see some some other inclusions obviously playing with land tax and playing playing with playing mono white it kind of led me into the path of including armageddon so i'm playing with three armageddon's so it's just your classical idea i'm gonna blow all the lands up i've got a land tax in play so as soon as you're playing a land I get to find my lands and you're kind of helping me back into the game and if you don't you know what i've got small little creatures before i cast uh, the armageddon so i first have i don't know um savannah lines on the board white knight on the board and then i cast an armageddon and i've got creatures and no mana and you've got no mana and nothing right so that's kind of living living the dream of the armageddon um then also i've included two ank of mishra's i think ank of mishra again is one of those great cards when you're playing very aggressively because you're dealing a lot of damage to your opponent with with all those weenie creatures so what your opponent wants to do your opponent wants to play out a lot of land and play out bigger creatures 
But because of the Ankh of Mishra, you have to kind of think twice, do I really want to play out a land and take two more damage? Another thing not to play out land is the fact that I'm playing with a land tech, so you know that when you're playing out land, you're allowing me to activate and use my land tax. So it's pretty difficult for the opponent to decide when to play a land. It's not anymore an auto drop in your turn. You really have to think, do I want to play a land? What is my plan with this land? And of course, after you find out that I also play with Armageddon's, again, you have to think, how many lands do I want to uh, dedicate to my board? You know, because I they could be wiped out all with just one single card. So you have to think about that. Um, the rest of my deck, I guess, is a pretty standard white weenie deck you can see i've chosen for an army of allah there in the right top corner i'm just a big fan of instant spells so it is actually if, if you ignore the swords and the disenchants it's my only instant spell that i think he will not see coming so i'm looking forward to kind of casting this uh and maybe maybe it'll give me the victory i'm kind of hoping for that because it is a plus two plus oh boost for all my creatures so it could, could be quite powerful Okay, so uh, this is the deck. Uh, oh, before I before we go to the games, just want to mention I've put four IO piles in my sideboard because for people that follow the channel, they know that I once got absolutely slaughtered when I was playing mono black versus a mono white deck and I didn't have any IO piles and the order of light bursts were like killing me. So after that, I've learned my lesson when I'm playing Atlantic, I need my IO pile inclusion. So that's why there are four of those in the sideboard. Okay, without further ado, let's continue to the games. Game number one, and I'm sitting on the left, Alexander on the player sitting on the right. Look at that dark ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. So this is a classical opening here for Alexander and uh, a problem for me, I guess, casting a land tax here passing turn. Let's see, what can he do? Playing swamp number two. Attacking here, so I am, and there it is, losing my first card here. That is a White Knight. Ooh, an Order of Light Bird. That has protection from black. Ay, 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 ay. This is a great start for Alex. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm looking at my own board state, and I'm like, oh, my God, how am I going to survive this? I forgot to take damage from the Hypnotic Spectre, by the way, so I need to change my life total here to 18. Hopefully I can correct it in this play. And look at that, already shuffling up my cards, knowing that there's not much that I can do against this power. Attacking with both. And there he goes, rolling the die, the dice, I should say. Uh, losing uh, basic planes, which is not too bad. I look at that, here I'm correcting it, I guess. Am I? I think I am. And I'm dropping to 13, it seems. Go, oh, because he's pumping his Order of the Ebon Hand. Yeah, so I've corrected the damage. Okay, so that's good. I was just counting in my head. Did I correct the damage earlier that I forgot to take from that first attack with the Hippie? But, I mean, I am right now on 13, and it's things are looking really, really good for Alexander. Playing my uh, second... A creature here, so another Ecation Javelinier, but remember, I cannot use the Javelinier to kill the Order of Lightburn. Now, hopefully, um, I get a chance to kill the Hypnotic Spectre next turn. So, I'm hoping that he cannot play a Terror or some other removal spell on my Ecation Javelinier. Aye, playing a Terror! Uh, oh, that's too bad. I really needed a Javelin here to stay alive to at least take care of that Hypnotic Spectre. This is interesting. He's only attacking with one. And losing my Armageddon. And dropping here to 11. And I wonder what he's going to do. Just passing turn here. So interesting that he wasn't attacking with... The Order of Lightbearer. Now, of course, I'm going to pick up my three lands again. So that's quite nice that I've got my, my land tax online. And, and in a way, it's protecting me from the discard of the Hypnotic Spectre. Look at that. Playing an Armageddon and playing a Savannah Alliance after that. I wonder if this is the best move. Obviously, I do have a land tax and I have... Uh, a lot of lands probably in my hand still, that's why I'm doing it. But then again, I mean, I am facing two very powerful creatures. 
And interesting to see here that Alex prefers to go on defense with that Order of Light Burr. Playing another Plains. Let's see what I can do. I really need to get rid of that uh, Hypnotic Spectre. Playing an Ankh of Mishra, which is great when you're ahead of the game. But in my current state, the Ankh is not all too good. And again, I'm thinking maybe I should have kept it in hand because it's also a possible target for Alex to take out with his Hippie. And to losing a Plains. But maybe my whole hand is filled with basic Plains, by the way. And then, it, and then it would be a sensible play. Finding a Conchhorn, so hopefully Conchhorn can kind of get me something. And, ooh, no, not a Swords. I thought maybe there's a Swords to Plowsiers, and now I'm attacking, hitting him for three, gonna drop to 15. I think it's a good decision from Alex to just go on and go on full attack with the Order. He can actually get the game already now. I'm going to one, if he pumps it up, with the with his two mana, he's actually gonna win this. Is he going to do that? It looks like he's not. He's actually gonna let me be on one life. That's quite interesting. He could have killed me there. Playing a Conchhorn, drawing two again, and, and you can see Conchhorn is okay, but not really great in this situation. Attacking him here for five, and I guess that's game next turn, because there's just not much, not anything I can do pre-sideboard against the order of Lightbur, and that's it. Yep, yeah, that's it. So that's the first game here for Alex. Went very quickly, and I think, you know, just a quick hippie when it when it stays unanswered, you know it's going to be a really, really difficult game. Uh, let's uh, let these players sideboard and then continue to game a number two. And here we go, game number two. And uh, Alex won the first one, so that means that I'm on the play. Let's see if we can get a game three here. Playing an Ecation Javelin here, turn one. The, the creature from the Fallen Empires comes into play with a Javelin counter. You can tap it to deal one damage to any target. So here it attacks. Alex going to 19, and then I'm playing a Savannah Lines in my second main phase. And it looks like I'm passing turn. Or am I thinking about doing something? I guess I'm passing turn here. So Alex getting ready to draw his card, playing Swamp number two and playing a Willow to Wisp. That, of course, is quite nice. And I'm deciding to play a Swords to Plowsiers on it. I was doubting a little bit. Maybe I wanted to first attack with the line, let Alex regenerate, and then use my Acacian Javelinier, but I decide not to. And playing an Order of Light Bird. Now, the tables have been turned, it seems like. In game one, it was really Alex who had a very strong start with the Hypnotic Spectre in Order of Light Bird. And here in game number two, ooh, there's a him to Turek taking away my last two cards. So that's actually a pretty good move here from Alex. Maybe this can get him back into the game. But what I wanted to say is he started with an order. Oh, and there an Acacia Javelin here on his Willow to Wisp, attacking him for four here. And there is an IO pile. And I'm looks like I'm really taking over this game. And I think the order of Light Burr is just a big problem for Alex here. And that's what we saw in game one where Alex was able to get his order of the Ebon hand out quite quickly and I couldn't find an answer. And as you can see, I've boarded in my IO piles, of course, to deal with those uh, creatures that have protection from white. And there we see a paralyzed. He cannot play it on the order of light bird because of protection from black. So the best option here is the Savannah Alliance. Now I only have three lands, so that's actually a pretty good move. I can't untap it. Attacking here, hitting him, pumping the Pump Knight. So hitting him here for four in total. He's dropping to eight. So there's a lot of pressure here on Alex. Who will have to try to get control of this game. But how? Is he going to play another him to Turek? I only have one card in hand though. But maybe it's a very good one. He's playing actually a Mind Twist for one. So there goes my Swords to Plowsiers. And a great way to protect against discard is simply playing out your hand very quickly. And I guess I managed to do that. And there we see a Black Knight. So it's 2-2 protection from white would usually be a huge problem for me. But I have the IO pile that I most likely am going to use. Casting a Conch Horn. I'm probably going to use the, the IO pile, right? I, I cannot imagine that I won't use it. I guess I'm not. I'm attacking instead for 2. 
so that he drops to five so maybe i'm going to activate my conch horn trying to find a land drop that could be an option as well i mean i am still on 20. so he's dropping to five here and passing turn interesting or i'm not i'm actually i'm not i'm actually going to use my conch horn here gonna dig for a land and then I pass turn. And I think I could have done this a little bit differently because if it was my plan to, to find that land, oh, look at this, finding a Royal Assassin. Now, again, the Royal looks scary, but the Royal cannot do anything against my Order of Light Burr. Attacking here now, and if I pump it up, it's so interesting to look back at this because I could have pumped up my Order of Light Burr, then it would drop to two, and then I could have killed him using the Conch Horn. And I'm not doing that. It's so interesting. And we saw that with Alex as well in game number one. I guess this is game Alex is saying you've got this one. But um, I guess we saw that in game number one as well where I saw a few options for Alex to actually win the game quicker than he actually did. And now we see me doing exactly the same thing. It's interesting how sometimes you cannot find... You cannot see that the victory is already there right in front of you on the board. Anyway, this was a very quick game again as well. So let's hope that game number three is going to give us some excitement. So uh, let's go to game three. Game number three, it is 1-1. One, one, and I guess, um, well, Alex, you get to start. So are you then a slight favorite? I'm not sure. I do have those... IO piles to deal with your protection from white, but maybe you have your glooms. We'll just have to see. There's a second black here from Alex hitting the table. And there is a dark ritual. Ay, ay, ay. What is he going to do? First playing a him to Turek, then he still has two black in his mana pool, though. This is a great start for Alex losing a basic planes and Ecation Javelinier. And there is a Black Knight as well. What an opening here for Alex. There is an IO pile, so at least that's an answer that I can use next turn if it sticks against that Black Knight. But what an opener here for Alex. Let's see. If he can do land number three, Mishra's Factory, if he can... Oh, I wanted to say if he can find a Hippie. Attacking for two here, dropping to 18, passing turn. And casting another one. Wow, I'm finding a lot of Vacation Javelineers in this matchup. Not finding my third land drop, by the way. Passing turn, deciding not to use the IO pile yet. I can just do that at instant speed. No need to do it now. Another Dark Ritual into a Hypnotic Spectre. And he's really choosing to use his mana carefully. He really wants to pump up that Mishra's Factory. And I'm using my IO pile, of course, on the Black Knight, taking two damage here from the Mishra's Factory. And the only good thing about it is that my hand is almost empty. So then hopefully the Hippie is unable to take too many cards. But of course, I now have my two Javelineers, so I can use my Javelineers to shoot down one of his creatures. But that's a little problematic. Will you go for the Hypnotic Spectre or will you go for the Factory? Again, it's something I don't have to decide yet. I can just wait up until his combat and then he animates his Factory. And then I can make a decision. And oh, we saw <laughs> Little Savannah Lines, but I changed my mind. Played a White Knight. I think that's a good decision because you wanna, you're able to block the Factory with the White Knight. This is interesting. He's choosing to attack. So using my two Javelinier counters to take care of the Hypnotic Spectre, probably going to block the Factory. And I wonder if I'm actually going to take the damage from the Factory. Interesting. I don't want to risk it, even though I've got First Strike on that White Knight. Attacking him here for four, I'm able to block one of the Cajun Javelineers, taking three damage. And playing an Order of Lightbird and a Savannah Alliance. And I probably just want to use my Savannah Lines to block the Factory. And there's a Paralyze on the Savannah Lines. And he's going to attack. Am I now going to... Taking the damage... This, I, I think it kind of makes sense now, because my Order of Light, but remember, I have to pay one white to give it first strike. And he had no mana left, so it makes sense. Attacking him now for six. Able to block one of those. 
bumping my order of light birds so that means he still gets six damage dropping to 11 playing another savannah alliance and there is an order of the ebon hand Ooh, and that's kind of nice for alex here because i only have white creatures i've already used up one of my io piles i mean i'm still ahead on the board clearly but still Tapping, no, not playing out anything yet. First going to attack, keeping all my options open, also with the Order of Lightbur. And, ooh, deciding not to, probably because of that Mishra's Factory, because Alex can pump the Mishra's Factory up to a 3-3, so he can animate it to a 2-2, then tap it after blockers are declared, making a 3-3. And playing a Conchorn, cracking the Conchorn. So, so far the Conchorns, I haven't been able to use the Conchorns in combination with land tax, unfortunately. So that kind of plan didn't really pan out yet. And there we see a bat moon. And things just keep getting more and more interesting. I mean, this game is far from played. I think Alex probably just, just going to attack. No, just not going to attack at all. He's keeping his order of light as a blocker. And I'm probably only going to attack with my... Sorry, order of, of the Ebon Hand. And I'm going to attack with... Ooh, and with the White Knight. And with the order of light bird. This is interesting. This is interesting. That means he's probably going to block on the White Knight. That's exactly what he's going to do. Do I have Army of Allah? Make it into a 3-3. Oh, I've got a Storch to Plows here. So, okay, that explains it. That explains it. So he's going to go up to 11. And then he's going to take 2 damage going back to 9. And then I'm going to cast another White Knight. And of course, that is that is the great thing about playing with white. You have access to disenchant and to swords to plow seers. Extremely powerful and useful. And those factories are just so important for, for Alex to deal with those protection from white creatures. And because I was able to get rid of that factory thing, things are just not looking great for Alex at the moment. And I guess we're, we're just discussing some plays and things and what he can possibly do to still get out of this. And I guess it's his turn again, untapping, now looking at his hand. I mean, it's still on nine. It's not over yet. Tapping a Swamp, you're another Paralyze. And it's just so annoying for Alex that he cannot use those Paralyze on... Um, on the protection from white creatures because you really want to deal with the white knights and the order of light burr but there's not really a way for him to do so at least he can kind of cage the lions and maybe i would have even attacked with the order of light burr here anyway i'm going to swing in for six pumping it up going swinging for seven means he's going to two playing another savannah lions almost got a full play set on the table of those and I think this is pretty much game. I mean, he needs a miracle here. And I think, yeah, I think that's it. That's game. And uh, wow. Yeah, there was just too much, too much going on from my side with those white knights and with those order of light birds. And I think you could see how important IO pile is with these matchups and also how important the... Um, the Mishra's factory can actually be. So that was interesting. So maybe I should include those in my mono white build. Let me know in the comments if, if you think I should include a couple of uh, Mishra's factories to the brew. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so very easily. Actually, simply liking this video already helps. You can also, do, also leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the decks. What are some things you would change? Always interesting to hear from you. And of course, you can subscribe to Timmy Talks if you're not a sub yet. And you can also support us on Patreon. So you can actually become a sponsor of the show. And there's an info card appearing right now. Click on a card. It'll take you to Patreon and you can see what else uh, is going on there and 
what you can get if you become a patron of the fantastic, wonderful Timmy Talks show. Talking about patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll to see all the fantastic, amazing people that are supporting this YouTube channel. Let's go to the end scroll. Think it is somebody can see.